Right, uh, sir. Uh, now I believe finally we have got Mr. Modi uh, connected and uh, uh, very good evening, sir. Are you able to listen to me this time? Are you getting my audio this time, sir? I am getting you. Good evening. Thank you so much, sir. So my question was, sir, the kind of specific information about the role, criminal activities, uh, involvement in drug trafficking, hawala, extortion, murder of all these uh, Khalistani extremists who are based out of Canada or, ha or have linkages with Canada, the kind of information that's there now brought out by NIA and obviously uh, must have been shared multiple times with the Canadians. Sir, what in your view was the response of the Canadians since you had the vantage of uh, helming the NIA? Uh, if you can share with the viewers of this country, just to give us an idea of whether the Canadians are actually being dishonest, outrightly dishonest in the manner in which they have conducted themselves on this Khalistan issue. No, in the international matters, what we keep on doing is we present our facts. We, frankly speaking, when we deal with a country, we don't uh, call them dishonest as such. Because our efforts have been to tell them what the evidence we have against these people. And we have been in insisting that appropriate action as per law should be taken against them. They are wanted, accused in India. They should be deported. We have been requesting, we have been providing uh, information about this man, this like, like uh, Niger and others. As far as Niger is concerned, it is a well-known right. fact that he is a declared terrorist by government of India. I remember, I think it was the year 2020, when he was declared uh, as a terrorist uh, as per U UAPA uh, by government and uh, on the proposals of right. NIA. And later on, his properties were also attached, which I believe on the orders of the court, which have been confiscated now. So there is no question or no doubt about these people being the terrorists and evidence has been sent to Canadian authorities from time to time. We have been meeting them, we have been meeting their police liaison officer and providing all the details through various channels including MEA. Abhishek? Yeah. Sir. Sir, I understand, I understand that the diplomats of the MEA or the top officers like you would not call Canada dishonest. That's okay. I mean, I, as a media person, I can share the angst of the nation and can see through the fact that uh, despite all the evidence that you shared with the Canadians, they never bothered and now they are taking a position which is absolutely contrary to facts. Uh, one more question that uh, I would like to ask you is, sir, that all these activities that these criminal gangs and with their Khalistani linkages and in fact with their linkages with the Pakistani deep state that they have been carrying out. Uh, uh, the information with the Canadians, whenever you shared with them, did they say that, okay, fine, they will verify, they will check. Or for example, in the case of Niger, the fact that they put him on no-fly list, both in the case of Canada and the United States, you think that there was some resistance from their side in terms of extraditing Niger, in terms of sharing more information from their side, despite whatever you told them? No, oh, the, the facts the speak uh, for themselves. You know, in certain matters from other countries, we had been receiving excellent cooperation. And the people have been deported, especially the person of Indian origin, if he is committing, if he has committed terrorist, terrorist acts uh, uh, in India or has, if he has run the terrorist activities outside India, which have been affecting India, we have been receiving excellent cooperation from different countries and people have been deported. And I mean, we can make out uh, from their conduct that uh, uh, the cooperation is not forthcoming. But it's a continuous process and we have been making our efforts. When I was in service, when I was heading NIA, we had been regularly meeting these people, providing them all the details. Whenever there is any query, we'll answer that and provide whatever details we have. Uh, but we always believe that uh, they have their own interest, uh, maybe political 
but uh, proprietary always demanded that these type of uh, hardened uh, terrorists should be handed over to the country uh, to which they belong, to which they are affecting. So we always expected that our efforts would uh, bring uh, fruit. But unfortunately, we were not, uh, we have not been successful till now that uh, such a hardcore terrorist has not been handed over to India. Yeah, that's a big, big uh, admission you are making, sir, that uh, when you were there and the kind of information you shared, the kind of cooperation that should have come from Canada, which you, according to you, came from other jurisdictions, was not forthcoming. And in fact, there was an element of uh, political decision making in something which was purely terror and crime related. Uh, on that note, my last question to uh, Mr. Chelani before we wrap up this conversation, sir. Uh, how do things go forward from here? Is it going to be absolutely downhill or it can still be salvaged? And if yes, in what manner and how? The ball is uh, in the Canadian court now because um, it's Canada that has marred the relationship with India by leveling allegations and providing nothing in support of the allegations. And to make matters worse, Trudeau has repeated the same allegations three times already. In other words, he has directly contributed to the worsening bilateral relationship with India. The irony is that Canada already has marred its relationship with many other countries in the global south, with China, with countries in Africa. Now its relationship with the world's largest democracy has been badly mauled, thanks to Trudeau. The fact is that today, the right, Pakistan uh, movement may be dead in India, but it's alive and kicking in certain small sections of the Sikh diaspora. And Canada has become the international yeah. headquarters of the Khalistan movement, especially Canada's British Columbia province is the base of operations of hardcore Khalistanis that are promoting or glorifying yes. terrorism. And India has rightly now identified Canada yes. for the first time as a safe heaven for terrorism, as an, intellect, as an international terrorist yes. sanctuary. And as a consequence of that, India has suspended yep. new visas for Canadians and directed the Canadian government to downsize yes. its diplomatic staff yes. in India. And again, as part of the same exercise, yes. as, you, as you pointed out at the beginning of your newscast, that India is now confiscating the properties of Canada-based terrorists yes. in Punjab. Their properties in Punjab yes. are being confiscated, which yes. and I think all these steps are, are necessary because what has happened in a way which uh, unintended consequence of Trudeau's uh, allegations against India is that now there is spotlight right. on Canada's right, sanctuary for transnational terrorists. And yeah. I think in a way that's good for India because yeah. now the heat is on Canada as to how it's become a safe heaven for various kinds of terrorists and extremists. Right, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chelani, and of course, uh, uh, Mr. Y.C. Modi, the former DG of NIA, making that uh, big uh, uh, revelation that uh, while he was helming it, uh, cooperation from the Canadian side was not forthcoming, like in the case of other jurisdictions, and uh, that uh, there was an element of political decision-making whenever it came to sharing information on these Khalistani terrorists from Canadian soil, active from Canadian soil. On that, that note, thank you so much, uh, both Mr. Chelani and Mr. Modi, for joining us uh, in this conversation. Uh, we slip into a short break on the other side. Live and breaking continues.